Personal eugenics is a somewhat old piece. So I think I first showed it in 1999, it says over there. It's actually the last in a series of works that I did, which were um, collectively called meniscus. Do you know what meniscus is? No, it's, the, it's like the surface tension. Yeah. And, and they're all works around people and their surfaces. Um, so the first one in the series was about physiognomy. Physiognomy is the idea of reading people's character from their faces. But in many ways I was kind of interested in more in these things as, um, as uh, disputed and um, disreputed sciences. And to me, in many ways, today's science is tomorrow's disreputable science. And so looking at stuff that was happening a couple hundred years ago, I saw a lot of parallels with things that were happening um, now. And so particularly around the time when I was making these was when the Human Geno Genome Project was getting really big. And you know, they were forever finding new gay genes or alcoholic genes or depressive genes. They were usually problematic genes. So I was kind of wanting to draw parallels between what was happening in biotechnology and, and what had happened a few hundred years ago. This one's the last in the series, and um, you know, eugenics being the idea that you can improve the human race through um, selective breeding. So what's happening here is, so that's the original face in the middle, and then these are all variations based on that face. And what happens is when you choose one of those, that goes in the middle and becomes the parent for the next. So in a sense, that's the parent, and they're all the children, and then you choose which one survives to the next generation. So it's like a very, it's very um, direct analogy, visual analogy to evolution. I kind of like it when people just evolve themselves to become another believable human being, but most people don't know when to stop. I don't know when to stop. Okay. In fact, you can, go, you can go for hundreds of generations and it becomes totally abstract. And so it gives you two copies, so you can take one home for the refrigerator. What ends up on the walls becomes a big part of it, because it almost becomes like a group portrait of that city. Mm. So, you know, the, 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 the wishes and desires of the people of that place. Okay. You know, in a sense, the, I should really have closings rather than openings because at the opening the work's empty and by the end of the show the work's... So in a sense I'm like building a framework that gets populated through people using it. But I guess another part of this one that I was interested in was also um, as people move more and more online, there's this whole idea that you can construct your identity online. And um, are you, do you know there's a cartoon from the New Yorker, it's a really famous cartoon from... I think it's from, back, it's from pretty early, 93 or 94, and it's two dogs sitting in front of a computer, and one dog's turning to the other dog and saying, on, um, nobody, on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. What am I gonna say that I wanna be? Mm. I think there's quite an aspect of vanity in this project, so I'm sure people hit restart quite often. Although once you get extreme, it's no longer you, it's safer. It's not me anymore now. You didn't really look like a mermaid.